Alex Jones here in New York City. And as you know, just about an hour ago, I was on for two segments with Piers Morgan on CNN. They had promised me three segments if I came here, and then I was going to debate Alan Dershowitz. But they panicked. The producers ran in. Um, the head producer was crying and saying it wasn't supposed to be like this. And Piers Morgan was, said, get out of here. And their security people were like, get out, get out now, you're coming with us. And I said, well, I have to get our stuff out of the green room. That said, you know I've covered Bilderberg. You know I've covered Occupy Wall Street. I've covered the DNC, RNC. I've been in news coverage where people are being arrested in mass. I've never put out a video asking for people to watch our back. We got here today at about 4 o'clock, drove in uh, from the airport into Midtown near CNN's main complex. They have several buildings. And when we got to the hotel, we were getting our cards, and I noticed what was clearly off-duty cops in the in the uh, windbreakers with the you know guns, talking into their little earpieces. They had earpieces and the little handheld pieces, and I didn't say anything to Rob Dew, who's running camera right now. Then about two hours before, after dinner, before we went down to CNN Center, we were walking around about. 10 blocks away just shooting video of this and that and I noticed more undercover cops looking at us and I said to do I said let's just go ahead and get out of here and then they had him waiting for us about 300 yards from CNN the building we were going to and the guy runs up and kind of gets in our face and we also ran into a few listeners as well but this guy got in our face you can tell it was a you know, big mean Bloomberg detective I've been here at protests before I've seen Luke Radowski's videos and uh, it was like, oh, I'm a, you know, I'm a big fan, but it was like pure violence in the eyes. And Dude's like, man, that guy was, was scary. I think that's a cop. And, and, and Dude's shooting video right now. He came to New York with me. And I said, yeah. And, and then we got there, and I saw some more outside the back entrance staring at us like gangsters. They're like cops from the movie Goodfellas, basically. Yeah. And then we go up, that all happens, and I said, listen, I want to go out the mall entrance, because there's a mall entrance on the other side, and the, and, and the security the head of security said, no, you're going out this way, and I said, but Bloomberg's guys are out there, I don't want any confrontations, and the guy started laughing at us, like, <laughs> yeah, and we got there, and there they are, you know, yeah. talking into their pieces, Rob, dude, I'm going to flip this around sure. and have you talk, sure. uh, can you describe to people what we just saw? Yeah. There, right as we walked out, there was a guy with a windbreaker, and he had his little earpiece in, and he was talking into his coat like this. And as we walk out, he looks at us, and then he kind of walks into the wall, like he's trying to get out of our way, but why is he walking into a wall? Like, he literally turned and walked but, into But a describe wall. the other stuff. And then, I mean, there, there was the, the guy who came up and approached us twice, and that was, uh, the second time was really spooky, because all of a sudden he's there. The first time we saw him approaching, the second time he came from behind. Well, I like, forgot about that one, but then yeah. there's all the other cases. Bottom line, what do you yeah. think's going on here? I think we're being cased, definitely. I mean, yeah, I yeah we're, we're being cased. And, and the way this will work is, oh, see, they're here protesting, you know, gun grabs. Oh, some crack dealer shot him. And if you don't know that Bloomberg's total mafia, you're not living on planet Earth in reality. And, and, and these people clearly work for Bloomberg. These are clearly police. And there's some other stuff that went on. Truth is stranger than fiction. I'll just leave it at that. I've never, that I can remember, put out a video. When, when I'm in foreign countries being followed by you know people in black SUVs and uh, being arrested. I mean, I mean, you've seen it all. I've never said we're in danger. My dad called me tonight and said, I want you to be real careful after that interview. Um, Rob's older son... Uh, you know, he's younger than 10, never says, Daddy, please don't go on this trip. My wife has never been this concerned. Uh, and I'm like, come on, quit being paranoid. And let me tell you, we got undercover cops all over us who look like they're from Goodfellas. Rob? Yeah. No, I mean, it's very spooky. I'm, yeah. you know. And, and everybody said you better watch it. You're going to Bloomberg's town. You know, this big insider, bankster type guy. <coughs> so that said, we're here and we're leaving tomorrow. Whatever happens, happens. I think putting this video out will protect us. And it was just super creepy because, uh, you know, when, when cops come over and grab you by the arm and go, I'm a big fan, you know what I mean, I'm a big fan. And then you look, there's another cop right there, and they're going, yeah, big fan, big fan. I mean, this, this country's gone, folks.
This is why we have the Second Amendment. And then Dershowitz came on, the guy that wrote memos calling for torture of anybody that disagrees, basically, and that, that they have torture warrants. Alan Dershowitz, I was supposed to debate him after. Piers Morgan panicked, as I predicted he would do by the third segment. Did I not predict he'd panic by the third oh, yeah. segment? Yeah. Kicked me out by the third segment. They broke their promise, which I expected. You went after their money master. See, the problem is people say, why don't you be nice to them? They're thugs. I know who they are. I mean, I know about Piers Morgan and the insider trading reports out of England and being fired for fake news reports and fleeing justice and the hacking scandals. And then my wife called me because I'm, I'm dealing with all these police detectives and the rest of it. And she goes, are you hearing this? And I later was able to go watch the video right before we did this where they're going, Alex is the reason we take the guns. He's not safe. You know, he'll shoot people. I mean, I have no criminal record. My guns are all locked up. Don't even really think about them. It's that when they come after our guns, as Thomas Jefferson said, that's when you know you're going into tyranny. And I called my dad, uh, you know, he saw it, and he said, yeah, you got to go watch this video of Dershowitz. And I went and watched it, and it was like, Alex Jones is dangerous, you know, we've got to deal with him, he shouldn't have guns, uh, he, you know, he'll, he'll, he'll go after people. Uh, I mean, here they are. Dianne Feinstein says, let's take Mr. and Mrs. America's guns. It's us, folks. It's the ruling, corrupt, insider trading Congress and all these globalists with, with all the derivatives. They're a mafia. And I've got guys out of central casting that are police. In fact, I saw once his windbreaker flapped up and there was the 40 right there. I got cops on me. And I'm known, folks, I don't even get speeding tickets but every few years. So just if something happens to us we're killed by crackheads, it was the NYPD or mafia they hired. Period. And, I mean, this city runs white slaves, that sex slaves out of here all day. This city, narcotics, you name it. This is Mafia Central. And I came here and told the Mafia. And, sure, I didn't do a perfect job, but did the best I could. I came here and I told the Mafia, you can go to hell. So, Alex Jones reporting from the front lines of the fight for this republic. Right here in New York, George Washington fought the British 15 to 1 odds. And he, he didn't win every battle. He lost most of them, but he persevered. And that was what was important. And, I just hate tyrants and bullies. Uh, how long have we been going here, dude? Seven minutes. Here is my little notes that I never even got to with Piers Morgan. And I want to go over some of these. I wrote these on the computer yesterday. I wrote some of the plane. Uh, I went over the stats that they hate, that guns are like number 15 in cause of unnatural death. Number one, suicide because of all the Prozac-type drugs. They admit they can commit suicide and kill people. I wanted to get to that. I covered some of it. Victim disarmament. The government's the one that disarmed the schools and advertised them as places to go kill people. Fast and Furious, 20,000 guns. Rocket launchers, hand grenades, stuff you can't buy at a gun show or a gun shop. Delivered down there by the White House. Blame the Second Amendment. Um, Pierce is in the news having bodyguards. He said he didn't have bodyguards. So that'll be a whole other report. That that's a, a not true. Drone attacks killing children all over the world, but Obama doesn't cry for that. Democide killing 290 million people. Government's number one threat. You did cover that. I did cover that. I covered it all, but not as much as I'd like. We have guns to protect ourselves from you. I made that point. Move to North Korea if you don't like guns. FBI crime stats covered that. Called him a hatchet man. Government arming to the teeth. The 1.6 billion bullets. Preparing for civil unrest. Um, you have blood on your hands again because they disarmed the schools and advertised them as killing zones. Why are Americans buying guns? We don't trust you anymore. You've lost the trust of the people. Uh, Amber Lyon, three-time Emmy Award-winning news producer for CNN, found out that Bahrain was paying money to CNN to kill her reports about them lining peaceful protesters up and machine-gunning them with government guns. Uh, I thought that I was going to be debating Dershowitz, so I was going to say, hey, you, you said we should torture anybody the government wants. I mean, what a monster. He's quote a liberal. Well, he's liberal, so it's okay to torture and have drone attacks. I mean, it's just all a big game. Um, arrested if you're politically incorrect. Uh, that's the kind of stuff he's been calling for. They were implying it again tonight. Uh, all of the NSA wiretapping. I was going to point out how in England they've gotten rid of free speech. I, was, I talked about Feinstein saying that she would... Uh, want to disarm Mr. and Mrs. America. If you don't know about that, you just Google Diane Feinstein, Mr. and Mrs. America, get ready to turn your guns in. That was just some of what I wanted to cover. Uh, I'm not obsessed with guns. I've been brought up my whole life with them to where I'm quite frankly bored with them. I like video cameras. I like to videotape like Christmas tree lights, you know, outside at night. I like to videotape the stars. I like to 
videotape, uh, you know, Lego stop start animation. I mean, I, I just I just know that when they come for the guns, it's it's all about enslavement. And I just don't know what to say anymore. I mean, I live in a country where I'm being cased and followed by men with guns who want my guns. As a citizen, you can't own guns if you live in New York City. But I had guys in windbreakers all day, and I didn't want to freak do out at first. And they were following us, and finally it just got so ridiculous, they wanted us to know. I mean, these guys were like, hey, man, I'm a big fan. It's like, I'm really a, like the mafia. I really want to take care of you and your family. You understand that? I really want to, you know. And you're like, dude, you got a 40 cal SIG right there. 40 cal HK or whatever. Uh, I mean, it's like they got their guns, and they don't want me having a gun. And you know what? They're smart. You're smart. Because you're not going to run your BS in places like Texas, no matter what you try, no matter how many false flags. You may have domesticated people in New York City, but you don't have people out in the heartland all across this country. From North Carolina to Tennessee, from Texas to Northern California, from Indiana to Southern Illinois. <coughs> We're wise to you, and you may have bankrupted our pensions and stole our country's freedoms and sold us out of the New World Order, but you haven't physically conquered us yet. And all you Bloomberg Mafia people can go straight to hell. Bloomberg, I know you made billions off insider deals. You know what? You got a bunch of armed men protecting you, but you don't want women out there in the heartland of America to protect themselves from all the crackheads that buy the CIA drugs. You know what? You can go to hell. All of you can go to hell. I'm not afraid of you, and I came here and I got in your red coat usurper hatchet man's face and told him to go to hell. All right, that's it. Pray for us, ladies and gentlemen. Pray when you get back to Austin, Texas. Tomorrow I should be back for the radio show. And thank you all for your support. But we're here in the middle of a mafia-run syndicate, and they are, they're crawling all over us. They're down there in the lobby right now. So this could be the last video we put out, but I think once we put it out, they're obviously surveilling us. We'll be okay. They'll make jokes. Oh, yeah, you had people following you. We probably even have some of these guys on tape. We've got to check it when we get back. Alex Jones signing off for InfoWars.com. And, Rob, I told you, I said, folks are all paranoid. They're saying, watch out in New York. They're a bunch of paranoid wimps. Didn't I say that at the Austin airport this morning while we were eating nope. scrambled eggs? Did I not say that? Yeah. Did I not say these people are a bunch of cowards and they're wrong? Well, you're not cowards. You were right. I was wrong. We've got good fellas climbing out our butts right now, okay? Alex Jones signing off for InfoWars.com. I love you.